Today's video is sponsored by PCBWay. More on that later. Believe it or not, this Nintendo Switch looking thing was the very first thing I ever 3D printed. Actually, that's a lie. I had to have a friend print it for me because I didn't have any printers at the time. But regardless, this was the first project I ever did that included 3D printing. And needless to say, I've wasted so much time. I've made so many mistakes. I've done a lot of 3D printing projects since then, but I could never really get this particular project out of my mind. This was my attempt at making a DIY drone transmitter that had a built-in FPV display. And to be honest, I had no idea what I was doing. Fast forward four and a half years, and I still have no idea what I'm doing most of the time, but I've always regretted not finishing this project. So I decided to take another stab at it. Now, obviously it'd be easier to just buy a transmitter, but why would I buy one when I can make a worse one? The original version of this project used a combination of a Raspberry Pi and an Arduino. The Raspberry Pi received the video transmission from the drone using a project called Easy Wi-Fi Broadcast, while the Arduino handled all the button and joystick inputs and sent them to the drone. Speaking of the drone, it hosted a Raspberry Pi to transmit the video, as well as a flight controller I made from scratch using the MultiWii firmware. At some point, this project just got put on the back burner, and over time, I ended up stealing both the Raspberry Pis out of it. So for this version, I'm going to scrap the DIY flight controller and the FPV all together, and I'm going to integrate directly with an off-the-shelf flight controller. That way, I can focus all my energy on making the transmitter look cool and hopefully work okay. After all, looks are the most important part. Just ask my wife. To get this thing working, there are a couple of problems I have to address first. When people buy RC transmitters, they typically come with a receiver that connects to the flight controller. The transmitter and the receiver have agreed upon a wireless communication protocol, which is usually called a TX protocol. And if I were to replace the transmitter, I'd have to reverse engineer that TX protocol. Now that's totally doable, but Instead, I'm going to make the transmitter as well as a super simple receiver that knows what to expect from my transmitter. The receiver will then communicate with the flight controller and that receiver to flight controller communication is a wired connection called the RX protocol. Now there are tons of different TX and RX protocols, but for now I'll be implementing my own TX protocol and I'll be using PPM as the RX protocol because that's what I could get working. The electronics for the receiver, like I said, are super simple. It's just an Arduino Nano connected to an NRF 24L01 transceiver module, and it sends the data along to the flight controller via an analog pin. The transmitter has a matching NRF module, a couple joysticks for throttle, yaw, pitch, and roll, two rotary encoders to adjust the trim, and the most important part, an arming switch. If you value your fingers, then an arming switch is an absolute necessity. This little switch makes sure that no matter what signal comes from the joysticks, the motors won't turn on until I'm ready. I also added an RX failsafe mode, so if the transmitter goes offline for some reason, the receiver will stop sending data to the flight controller. All right, that's pretty much it for the electronics. Now I just gotta clean up this mess of wires, and for that, I'm gonna use my fancy circuit board cleaning wand thing. Well, this thing might've been a waste of money, but I should be able to clean this up a whole lot more with the help of today's video sponsor, PCBWay. PCBWay is my go-to manufacturer for all my DIY projects. They offer tons of different services like CNC machining, 3D printing, sheet metal fabrication, and injection molding. But what I mostly use them for is PCB manufacturing. Their website has a tool that allows you to get an instant quote on a PCB by entering the dimensions of the board. But what I like to use them for is their PCB quick order service, which allows me to upload a Gerber file, select what color I want for the solder mask and silk screen, and then order 10 PCBs for only $5. They even show a little preview of the PCB before you order it, 
which I think is awesome because it actually helped me to catch a design issue I had with my board outline. Once you order them, they usually arrive in two to four days. And once you get your PCBs, you'll be absolutely blown away by the quality. Anyways, make sure to check the affiliate link in the description so you can get $5 off your first order. Huge thanks to PCBWay for sponsoring this video and for providing these awesome PCBs for this project. Okay, before I finish assembling this thing, I need to make the plate that the controls mount onto. I could definitely 3D print it, that would certainly be the easiest option, but if I 3D print the plate, how am I gonna show off my custom circuit board and my absolutely terrible soldering skills? So rather than 3D printing the plate, I'm gonna try to make it out of acrylic. Now, unfortunately, I don't think I'm gonna be able to machine it with my snap maker, ooh, like I did for my do-it-yourself Bluetooth speaker, the Snapmaker's work surface just isn't big enough to machine the outline of a plate. And to be honest, this thing really struggled to get through the acrylic the first time. I am working on solving the problem of not having a bigger CNC, but in the meantime, I think I'm gonna have to cut all the holes by hand. This ended up being one of those projects where absolutely everything worked out as planned. I didn't make any mistakes or break anything, and pretty much everything worked out perfectly. 
No, obviously that's a lie. There were several things that I missed during the design phase that I had to figure out and fix later on, but that's all part of the fun. Starting from the top, I made the mistake of assuming that the 3.3 volt pin on the Arduino would be enough to power the radio module without any problems. So I ordered a bunch of PCBs, soldered them up, and the drone had a range of like 10 feet. And I don't need to tell you that being within 10 feet of a drone like this is terrifying. So 10 feet wasn't gonna cut it. Now the data sheet of the radio modules that I'm using say that they have a range of up to 800 meters. So 10 feet, 800 meters, clearly there was something wrong. It turns out that the Arduino's 3.3 volt pin can only supply about 50 milliamps of current, which is enough for the low power setting of the radio module, which it turns out has a range of like 10 feet. But to kick it up to the higher power setting of the radio module, you need something closer to 250 milliamps of power, which the Arduino just can't support. So to fix this issue, I first tested it out using a voltage regulator connected directly to the battery, and then I redesigned the boards to include pins for a 3.3 volt regulator. A couple days later, I got all my new boards from PCBWay, I soldered all the connectors onto them and the voltage regulator, and I swapped it in for the old board. In the end, did building my own transmitter save me money? No, but does it work better and have more configuration options than an off-the-shelf version? Also no, but it does look cool and it works okay. So I'm gonna call this project a win. I do hope to come back to this project in the future and try to make this thing universal so it works with any receiver. But for now, I need to practice flying my drone because I am an absolutely terrible pilot. But if you're crazy like me and you wanna to try to build your own transmitter, then I will have all the parts and code down in the description below for you to use at your own risk. And I probably don't have to say this, but be careful with drones. Make sure to follow all your local laws and restrictions and always wear proper PPE. Anyways, that's it for this video. Do me a favor and gently click that like button and subscribe to my channel. Also, make sure to check out PCB Way using the link in the description below so you can get $5 off your first order. Otherwise, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one. with an off the but mostly it revolved and then I redesigned the power supply bleh nope that's wrong I'm gonna get anywhere near the theory so if you're just getting into the